Okay, so the trigger is used usually in this case. You use a trigger to um, <clears throat> trigger something when one of the following occurs. Uh, usually we have an insert, an update, or a deletion. Okay, usually those three are the big ones. Uh, so we add data to a table, then it will uh, cause this trigger to um, execute. So we don't call it, we don't call the trigger. Trigger calls automatically uh, within, the ta within the database. So to do the example here, I'm going to go ahead and create a very simple table. Um, <clears throat> so we can create a very simple table called, uh, I'll call this the parent table. Let's just say that when I insert data to the parent table, then I also add the data to the child table. Okay, you can do that automatically because the trigger does that. So uh, this is also very useful for um, when you have like relationships, right? We add data to the um, I don't know the uh, let's just say the department table. It will propagate that to all the sub child or the ch children tables, uh, and also want to update those tables automatically and use that to do a trigger. That's one way. Okay. So our parent table, I'm going to have this really simple, just maybe two fields. Um, I have the <clears throat> ID in type, and we'll make this the primary key. And make that identity, so we don't have to worry about <clears throat> that incrementation. And then the second will be just another variable name, maybe... Um, a score of n type. Very, very simple like that. <clears throat> okay. And go ahead and execute that. Create another table called the child table. I should call it a child table, but. And then si similar. <clears throat> the ID, let's just say that I want to. Um, I want to store the identity. We learned that last week. Right? How to get the identity value into the child table. Right? We insert the data. Um, as so, let me just just for the information here. So I have an ID as well. This is child ID. Int type. Uh, same thing. Primary key. Identities, I don't have to worry about commutation. Here I just put here parent ID. And this will be in the end type. Okay? So this ID here will be grabbed from this ID. It's the last ID that was inserted into the database. And it will pull that, put that in here. So let's go ahead and uh, execute that. Okay, so now we'll write a trigger. Um, trigger looks like this. Create trigger, very similar. We give it a, a name. Um, I don't know what the... Um, prefix is. But let's just say that I want to have... Call it maybe TR... A G uh, parent insert. <clears throat> okay, so when I we insert data to the parent table, it's going to trigger this trigger and it will run it. Okay, um, on the table, so on the parent table. Okay, <clears throat> so you run it on the parent table. And I want to make sure if I have that right, I had it somewhere. I think, let's see if I have one in here. Yeah, maybe. It's different, but so on a table, um, so, okay, so on, on this table, only on the table, where the table is, is inserted, you get the table, uh, then you follow up by the word for, and then here you have either insert, if you want to have insert, if you also want to say when I update the parent table, you can also put that here, right? And you can also put for delete, right? So you can trigger any one of these. Will cause this 
um, trigger to func to execute. Okay, let's just say I, I do that, um, and then here you have the usual part. Okay, so it doesn't like it because I didn't put that into its own batch. Okay, so when I <clears throat> do insertion, we can, and I, I just put it here because you can, okay, you can, but usually you can do that for whatever it is, but let's just say I'm going to, I'm just going to put insert, okay, it's easy because I want to grab the identity from the current table. So here I want to say, uh, I think <clears throat> when that happens, then I want to uh, declare a variable, uh, declare the parent ID and set that to the identity. Okay, that identity is the um, the identity is set that at add to the parent. When I insert that parent ID, I get a value, whatever that is. It's one. Then it's going to put one and add that to the child. Then uh, I can go ahead. <clears throat> Doesn't like this. Is it put into a uh, friend? Okay, put it to a friend. And then I can go ahead and now insert into a child. <clears throat> the first is an identity. I can leave that out. And then the second is just the parent ID, so I put here the PID. Okay. Oh, I have to put the value, sorry. Wrong syntax. So that's how I'm doing. I, when I enter data to the parent table, it's going to trigger this, this trigger, and then it's going to grab the last ID from the parent table and insert that to the child table. That's all. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, execute this. Okay, we got that in there. Just to make sure, we select the parent and also the child. Just make sure there's nothing there, right? Shouldn't be anything there. If there are, it's been hacked. Okay, so if we run both of them, you see that there are no data in the empty. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and insert um, a data into the child first. So just to show that it shouldn't affect the parent. So I will insert into the child the values. I'll just put the first is identity, so it doesn't matter. Second is, a, is an integer, you can put like one, two, three. You can put a few of them, anything you want. And insert that, okay. If you select the select, you should see that the parent has none, the child has two. Okay, so now let's see the trigger. Trigger is when I insert into the parent values of um, the first is identity I don't worry about that <clears throat> just say 555 so I'm expecting the child who have the third record here has the ID of um, 3 because ID but the parent ID should be 1 right that's the first identity <clears throat> so let's run the parent okay it, sh it shows you a two row affected Right, because it runs the first is the parent, and it runs the child also inside the trigger. And if I select both of them, you see that the child has inserted the third record with the ID of one, which is the identity of this parent. When I insert that, the identity is automatically stored inside this um, uh, global global uh, variable, and I insert it into the child table so that it as both to the parent and the child. All right? <clears throat> so that is all. That, that's what trigger does.
Okay, so you can write trigger on a particular table. So when you do something, if I delete from the child, uh, if I delete from the parent table, what should happen to other tables? It doesn't have to be the child table. It could be uh, the same table. It could be a, a multiple table, uh, or it could be something else completely. So that's what triggers for. I mean, you don't call it directly. You just maintain by the system.